Okay, I've got it uh, sanded, coated again, and I think it's ready for a little primer. So I'm just going to lay that low tape. Surfacer. Oh. 
So we're back out working on the 66. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put the tailgate back on the truck and see see how it fits because I did the uh, the back side of the tailgate. I want to be able to see if it fits nice here so I can make any adjustments that I need uh, before I start finishing the back side of the tailgate because right now I can get in there and I can pry on the and, and straighten it or do whatever I need to do to make it look right uh, before I start finishing the inside so I'm gonna go ahead and try to put this tailgate back on these old ones are kind of interesting to, to put on. They don't they don't have the the cutout in the bottom of the ta the the tailgate, so both these pivots are completely round. So you've got to you've got to get this one up in there. Anyway, I'll show you. You'll see what, I, what I'm talking about. So you put this side in.
So what I'm looking at now is how that looks running the gap there. And honestly, honestly, there's a, I might try to work it a little bit there in the middle. It's a little tight right there in the middle. So what I'm going to do get my pry bar and then see if I have a small piece of wood if I do Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna leave that alone. I'm just kind of denting it, and then stuff is falling down. So I think I'm just gonna leave that alone. I'm just making it look worse. I don't think it's gonna be a big issue. So. I kind of like that. So I'll go ahead and hit that with the uh, grinder and uh, 
Looks like I need to weld up a couple of holes. So let me grab my welder. Got to weld up a couple holes and I'll grind this a little bit and then we'll put some uh, put some filler in it. I think I'll just work it with it here on the truck. Nice and solid, doesn't want to go anywhere. So, okay. All right. Made a mess. Quite. Oh. I gotta find.
right. Let's get a little heat going in here.
So, glad you can't see that very good through the camera because I messed with it. I should have left it, but I played with it. Caused myself a little bit more work. So, that's something you learn with experience when to leave it alone. But that's going to look really, really good. So, we'll let it set up and then I'll come out here in a little bit and we'll uh, sand it up. So a good friend of mine, when I was growing up, we were uh, 16 years old, 17 years old, and uh, getting this truck ready to paint for the first time, and we had no power tools. Uh, everything we did on this truck, we did by hand, and uh, where is it? We had. We had one of these, a uh, long block, and we had one of these. Matter of fact, it might have been this one, this rubber block that we had. And uh, the both of us wanted to get on one side, wanted to get on the other, and we'd just go to town on the thing with this long block. Uh, no DA, no electric sanders, no nothing. We got it ready and did it all by hand. I was thinking about that the other night uh, when I was getting this ready to paint 40 years ago. Uh, how we did it. And uh, I borrowed a compressor from my neighbor that lived across the street. He was a car guy. Had some cool cars. His name was Dusty. He had a 55, I believe it was a 55 Chev four-door with a straight six in it, it was painted, painted clementine orange. It, uh, it was about the color of my grinder. It was that orange. And I used to spend hours and hours and hours in his garage uh, watching him work on cars. But he had a 55 Chev and then he bought a 56 Chev when his son he had a son that was a couple years younger than me, and he bought a car, a 56 Chev. It was about the color of this truck, turquoise green and white. He put a put a big motor in it, and well, it was a small block Chevy, but it was uh, souped up, and they used to go out to the racetrack, and him and his son would race that 56 Chevy. And I remember going over there and helping him mess with that, but. Anyway, I borrowed his compressor and he had a, an old uh, suction gun and we mix up the primer and throw newspaper on the windows and we primed the heck out of it. And uh, it stayed that way for a long time. I got it, we got it ready to paint, but we never painted it. Uh, probably took another three, it was in primer for probably two, oh, two or three years. Before I could uh, get it painted, but yeah, just how things have changed in 40 years. Being able to have some power tools, a little bigger compressor, a welder, stuff like that, it really makes uh, 
makes this a little easier to do. And then, you know, 40 years of knowledge, you know, that doesn't hurt either. But, you know, we were young, dumb, didn't know any better. So we got out there and worked our fannies off and got it ready to paint and got it painted. And it was beautiful for lots of years. It looked really, really good. And then it didn't, it got to where it wasn't my daily driver and it sat a lot. So anyway, uh, I'm going to see if this last coat's ready to sand and sand it and then I'll prime it and we'll take some video of it being finished like I did the other side. Okay, so there it is. I've 180'd it. And now I'm going to tape a little line because I like straight lines and I'm going to prime it. And... Uh, the tailgate will be done until we get ready to do the final body work on it. Still got a lot of rust to go through, but uh, I'll come back and bring you guys back and show you what it looks like uh, once I get it uh, get it in some primer. So I'll be back. Okay, so there it is, all primed up. Looks pretty dang good. Right there's the piece I took out. You see how nasty that was. I keep showing you that, but I'm pretty proud of this. <laughs> but yeah, looks good. Been a long time since it didn't have a vented tailgate. So that's about it for the tailgate. Uh, I think the next time I work on it, I'm going to try to take the bed off work on the cap corners, stuff like that. Depends on the weather. I might work on some stuff that's a little easier. Like maybe, uh, I think I've showed you guys this before, but I got some custom venting going on the fender wells and, and up here on the radiator support. So I might tackle these next. Uh, I can cut them out and tack them and then take the fender off and then do the inner fender. So maybe that's what I'll do. But uh, I know I still got a lot of rust underneath and, and then of course there's the cab. Uh, you can see over there some really serious rust. We're gonna grind it all out down here and separate it. Leave, try to leave the drip edge and then uh, put the new top in, the new cab in. But I'm gonna wait till it's warmer weather for that. Talking about uh, relocating the gas tank to the back, getting the uh, tank out of the cab so you don't have to smell the fumes all the time. And right here, these holes right here are where my dad had some hooks. It had a little cab high camper on it that uh, had some tie downs that went down here and when I when I did the body work on it originally I just filled them full of uh, filler so I'm gonna grind those out and weld them weld them up get rid of the camper tie downs because the old girl's never gonna carry another camper and uh, yeah drop this back bumper off I'm gonna try to restore that so lots to do lots of videos Hope you guys are, uh, hope you like it. I hope whoever gets to see it enjoys it as much as I'm enjoying doing it. So, till next time.